Hello. Not worry, it's very grease on my lenses. <sighs> Are you ready? Okay, hello. We hello. are doing a mukbang. I'm so hungry. I've been waiting for this man for a very long time. About two minutes. <laughs> um, we just made this recipe. It was the last recipe we made for a video of mine, which will be up. So go check yep. it out. Yep. It's, what is it, Alex? This or the mm -hmm. recipe video? The recipe. The recipe is pasta bake, pumpkin pasta bake with cheese. Well, it's, it's like a, Jeez. he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> he watched me cook it. Yeah. It's basically mac and cheese made with pumpkin, so yes. it's like really sweet. It's getting quite dry now, so it maybe doesn't look as good as it did when it came out the oven. I'm sure it's been... still good underneath the breadcrumbs. I mean, it's been sat here for quite a while. <laughs> two minutes. Alex has been sat here for a lot longer than two minutes. What are you doing? I'm just patting you. Okay, um, right. but yeah, we'll, we're going to show you it up close because I know that's what people do in mukbangs. So they want to get a good eyeful. Look at that. And Alex is going to mm. dig in. So take a big spoon. What an action shot. Where? In the corner. Just over here? Wherever. Just, just do it because it's very heavy and I did a very intense workout the other day and I'm about to die. Yeah, Lift right. it up. Ah. Oh my god. Oh, it's oh. <laughs> okay. Right. Put it on one of the plates. I want that cheese that we lost. That big goop of cheese that fell That's off. That's mine. No. Right. How hungry are you? Alex is complaining um, he's not that hungry. I was not complaining. No, I, I was don't just think saying. No, because we um, ate. I had to go to the shop to get some ingredients. So we ate porridge quite late. Yeah. And it was a lot of porridge. Um, and that was about 11. And now it's lunchtime. So I'm not feeling super hungry. Let me show you what it's like on the plate. So that's it on the plate. So it's got pasta, it's got little chunks of pumpkin, spinach, cheese and breadcrumbs on top, and then also in the actual sauce, it's basically like a mac and cheese with onion and pumpkin and spices, and it smells so good. And this is like perfect, I think, in the autumn to make for friends and for family, because it's very non-vegan friendly, if you're vegan or vegetarian, yeah. um, to make for family and friends. But yeah. We're going to do a Q&A in this video because I put on Instagram, but we'll try it first and then we'll get into the questions. Okay. Okay. Right. Taste test. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. That's wholemeal pasta. Yeah. Mm. So creamy. Alex doesn't like wholemeal. It's okay. He would have preferred it with yeah. penne. Mm. Penne. I, no, just the regular stuff. Oh, it's so good. Okay. okay. I need to slow down so I can eat this whole thing mm -mm -mm. in yeah. one go. Now I'm hungry. Huh? Now I'm, now I'm tasting this. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. So we put on my Instagram to ask us anything. So I'm going to see what questions. I only did it a few minutes ago, so. We'll see how many responses we've got. Oh, we've got a good Zero. few. Zero. Oh. We've got a few. So, let's start with the first one. One of the first ones. What is a mukbang? This. Next question. <laughs> a mukbang. It's like an eating show. I think it's... Did it, is it... I don't know where it's from originally. I'm going to guess... Is it Japanese? Korea. Or is it Korean? But... I, I think you're right. I think it's Korean. Double check that. We'll put on the screen where it originated. There'll be a, a country's flag on the screen. <laughs> Um, but it's just an eating show where you sit and eat food and I think lots of people have taken it up on YouTube because it's a bit of fun and people do Q&As and stuff and I figure because we do loads of recipes we should do we want to do more mukbangs give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more mukbangs so next question how long did it take for your channel to grow yours I presume yeah yeah um well I've been doing it we've been doing it for nearly well, two and a half years now. Yeah. I started, my first video was uploaded in February of 2016. So, I think I recorded that video in December though. I remember that. You recorded it just after Christmas, I think. Yeah. And you, you, got, January. you, you got a camera for Christmas. And mm -hmm. I remember you trying it out and it was cute seeing as you'd like been vlogging on this big SLR that mm -hmm. had no autofocus and you couldn't see the screen. Mm -hmm. And you were filming about putting up curtains or something? Or? 
Oh, I never uploaded that video. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I like recorded loads of random stuff and then I ended up uploading like a oh. kind of a what I eat in a day, but I just vlogged my day. And it took me ages. I think it took me five or six months to get a thousand subscribers. So I was uploading anything I wanted just for fun, just vlogging our lives in Cornwall. The How regularly were you doing it? I was doing it a few times a week okay. and it was quite fun. And then I started to do minimalism videos and they really took off because I was looking into minimalism and nobody had really documented their decluttering journeys. I, I followed a lot of minimalists who were already there. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna document this and film it and vlog it and do it really like down to earth, showing all warts and all, everything I own. And then lots of people were really interested in those. So that kind of made my channel grow a bit. And then there were just a few videos that kind of like picked up, my healthy habits video being one of them, which is my most viewed mm -hmm. video. Mm -hmm. And then just over time, things picked up. And then recently when I started doing more recipe content, that again, my channel has like blown up that in the last- the turn of the year. Yeah, in 2018, my channel has like gone from like 100,000 subscribers to like 250. I wouldn't say it's blown up, like it's not, I'm still a small YouTuber, but like it's, it's I've gained a lot more subscribers than I ever did before. So it's kind of a progressive overload, I guess, mm -hmm. of stuff that, yeah, that's how, how long it took. Alex, did you get my M chain from you? No, no, mm -hmm. sadly not. This was from my sister. I get a lot of questions about this. It's just a gold necklace with an M chain because lots of people say where, it's, where is it from? Um, but if you literally search like letter chain or letter um, pendant or whatever, they'll do your letter. It's the first one that comes up on like Argos. <laughs> no, um, and I've had it for a really long time. It's gained so much length because it used to be like up here but the chain has over time like grown. I once I accidentally grabbed it and yeah. pulled, I was trying to yeah, I've done grab that you or well. something. And, and then Ooh. you, what? <laughs> when was that? Ages ago. Mm. And then just it kind of stretched it. Mm. I mean, at least it didn't break. But. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to get another chain because it's a bit long now. Mm. Um, oh, I want to just eat. <laughs> How do people answer questions and eat? I'll get one for you to answer this time so I can okay. eat some. I'll just talk and talk. Okay, three things you love the most about each other. Don't roll your eyes, you start. And I'm gonna eat some food. I wanna get some breadcrumbs in there. Um. Mm. Uh, what, physical or? Anything. I like. No, love. Oh, I love? Mm. Oh. Mm. Why is it so hard? Get on with it. I love your body and your brain. That's two. Alex. I love, right, I think we've, we might have answered something like this a long time ago. And I remember saying, I love your determination, your drive, because you always just kind of, you're always going for something new. Yeah. You never kind of settle with stuff, Aww. which I like. Oh, what else? Why is it so hard? I don't know, because it's kind of very personal. Well, just say to be it. I love the way you cuddle a cuddly toy and a hot water bottle at night. I find that pretty cute. I can't think of what else without it being weird or like. Why? Just say whatever. What? The th top three things you love. Oh. Okay. And I love how good you are at cooking. Oh because you will often just get up and cook. Mm. Like, even if I offered to cook, you'd be like, no, I'll do it, because I'm quicker. You'll mm -hmm. just take ages, which is yeah. nice, because. <laughs> it's, it's really, I love when Alex cooks, but sometimes it'd be like 7 p.m. and Alex would be like, oh, I'll cook, because he's trying to be really helpful. But Alex is just yeah. a generally a bit more of a easygoing, slower paced person. Which is why so, my food tastes better. No, but you're, too, you, you're great at cooking, but you'll just take maybe like two hours or so to cook something. And then we won't eat till nine and I'll be like really angry, frothing at the mouth in the, in the living room. So. Bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. But I love that you just, you don't do it begrudgingly, you just get up and do no, it. No, I like you love cooking. cooking, yeah. So it's like meditation. Great. So three things I love about you. Is easy for me. You took made this so difficult. <laughs> I love how unbelievably kind you are. Like you're the kindest person ever, and you're you're always doing kind things for everybody and thinking about other people. 
You are hilarious, which I'm sure you guys can see. Alex is the funniest person I know. And you're very thoughtful. I guess it's the same thing as being kind, but you're very thoughtful in mm. um, doing little things for me to make me feel better or help me out when I'm feeling down. You're always like there for me. That's two and a half. That's three. Oh. That was easy for me. You yeah. struggled a bit, didn't you? I'm not good at thinking you get abstractly it. like that. You don't like, Alex struggles to talk about his feelings. Yeah, I love your legs, your bum, and your hips. <laughs> mm. That's so good. That's so good. Okay. In your opinion, is buying a leather products secondhand still vegan? Go. I have done it. Although I'm not sure if I was vegan at the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what do I do if I was confronted with something like that. If I was in a charity shop and mm -hmm. I saw a nice pair of shoes, I would probably say yes, but I can understand why people would say no. And I can understand why people would say, well, if you buy something that's leather and wear it around, you're promoting the use of leather, yeah. which is not very vegan, but I'm buying something secondhand. I haven't contributed to anything. Um, I don't know, I guess if someone was looking for a pair of leather shoes and they couldn't find it in the charity shop, so they went and bought a new pair, you know? I it, agree. It's difficult, isn't it? I think it's vegan. I mm. think that veganism, the point of veganism is to stop buying animal products and stop eating them and stop, so that you're basically boycotting the industry, right? Mm. If you're buying something secondhand, that's the, the individual's choice. Some vegans find it uncomfortable. I personally, I don't think I'd buy a secondhand leather product because I wouldn't I'd, enjoy the feeling of wearing I'd, leather skin. Yeah, I'd never wear, I never even liked leather jackets or anything no. like that. The only thing would be maybe a smart pair of shoes, but that yeah. would be so rare that I wouldn't do it anyway. Yeah, and it would feel a bit uncomfortable for me yeah. personally. But having said that, if you're somebody who, like, I personally don't mind buying wool secondhand because wool yeah. doesn't make me feel uncomfortable because it's not the skin of an animal. It's similar to like the way we tried to buy lots of electronic products secondhand yeah. because <clears throat> There's lots of similar things that go into the making of electronics and like, yeah. you know, batteries and yeah. stuff, special components in phones. And I think that secondhand is always a good option. Like yeah. there is nothing wrong with buying secondhand. You can't fault it. So if you are a vegan and you want to buy a secondhand leather product, go for it. That is your individual choice and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The point of veganism is to boycott the industry. It is not to be picky about the little independent choices. And I think that a lot of vegans get hung up on those choices because they're so passionate and because they're so frustrated by the industry and it is not beneficial for the overall cause. It's like any cause, like feminism or racism or not cause, but any movement, any problem, any issue. Um, sometimes people get caught up in the little fine details of things and they end up arguing with other people who are on their side and it doesn't benefit anybody. It just distracts from the whole point of what we're trying to do. Mm. And I think that's what I would say about that. If you want to buy a secondhand leather product, do it. Doesn't harm anything. And arguably, it's better for the environment to buy a secondhand product than it is to buy a new mm. new vegan new vegan leather product. That's but, a, yeah, I see that argument a lot. Yeah. I remember hearing something, we all do, <laughs> something about it's better to buy a secondhand car than to buy like a brand new Tesla electric mm. car or something like that. Mm. I don't know how true that is, but I can see the benefits of it. Five key tips to reduce your waste and be a bit more eco. So I do have a video what? on this, oh, yeah. but <laughs> five key tips to reduce your waste. Take your own water bottle with you everywhere you go, when you travel especially, and go into any cafe, any restaurant, any place and get water from them. Obviously Google if you're going abroad if it's safe to drink the water, but when we were in Thailand for example, they had um, water fountains everywhere that you paid for and it was safe water mm -hmm. to drink. And that reduces buying plastic <clears throat> bottles. I don't really ever buy a water bottle unless it's like an emergency and I need to because I don't have it for some reason, but yeah. that's I don't know when that's happened to me. No, you always have it in... Yeah. A bag, which is another thing always. to always take. Always take a bag with you everywhere, a backpack. And I always take a backpack when I'm traveling when I'm out about, and I put like a tote bag inside it. It takes up no room, mm -hmm. no no um, problems there. What else? Um, to be more eco. What was the question? Five tips to reduce your waste and be a bit more eco. I would say to reduce the amount of meat and dairy and eggs you're eating and reduce your animal products. I'm not going to tell anyone to say you have to go vegan, but just reduce. That is the... Im important thing. There's been a lot of articles recently talking about the impact 
that animal agriculture is having. And we all knew it already, but like it's it's becoming more prominent in the media now. People are talking about it more. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. So if you can eat more vegan food during the week, eat some of my recipes, then you're doing an amazing thing. And if you're gonna, if you can swap things out, like swap for some vegan cheese, for some vegan milk, hmm. give that a go. What have you got any others? Um, I have videos on this. The, yeah, I'm trying to think of the top five best things. I'm not sure about the top five, but things like, you take a bag to the supermarket and also try to buy things in as little plastic as possible. Yeah. Like these squashes. Yeah, they try and go for things that aren't in plastic. Peak. Yeah. So like we used to buy cherry tomatoes all the time, whereas yeah. now we try and get like the, the vine ripened ones. Yeah, just because the things like that. That was something we bought regularly and mm. we were always buying them in plastic and there's another option yeah. there. And recently I went to the uh, store in Brighton, there's actually one up the road that does it as well, where you can just refill your laundry liquid mm -hmm. or your soap, uh, blah, 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 you know, all that stuff, mm -hmm. um, which I like. And it's like the same price. I, I was worried it was going to be more expensive, like you buy tomatoes loose, you buy onions loose, it's going to be more expensive, but it's yeah. like, if it is more expensive, it's so negligible yeah. in price, at least where we live, that it's just not worth it to... Mm. One thing, if you're a girl and you have a period, mm. or if you're anyone who has a period, Try using menstrual cups or um, reusable pads. Give them a go. I switched to a reusable, uh, sorry, a menstrual cup um, a few years ago, and honestly, I'd, it's the best thing I've ever done. It's a life changer. It makes periods so much less hassle, and I think it's I think ten thousand. The average um, person uses ten thousand tampons in their lifetime, mm. and they normally come with plastic on them. So that's an option. That's Ooh. something that could be good. Compost your food. Compost there your food, yeah. Get a little composter for your kitchen and we take it to our local garden. Mm. That At least in the a UK, a lot, of, a lot of councils will take it from your door. Yeah. But we got unlucky and we can't do that here, but. Yeah. <sighs> if you could move to a different country, where would you go and why? Hmm. Um, I don't really know. I think I would move to France. Hmm. Boring. Because I would, if I was to move to another country, I would want to learn another language. What about Canada? No. Oh. I would want to learn another language and I'd want to learn French the most. So I think France, I'd like to move to... Oh, so Quebec. Yeah, but it's a different type of French, isn't it? Hmm. That's what I would choose. Um, if it was like, snap my fingers and make it happen, I'd probably say Japan. Hmm. I've always liked Japan because of video games, I think. And a lot of video games have like recreations of Japan. I think we're going to go there next year, aren't we? I would love to go there next year. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about zero waste? Is it really possible to do a no waste at all? No. I think I have never referred to myself as zero waste or ever used the term zero waste. I think I put it in a title of a video a long time ago, but I changed it. Um, because I just don't relate to the term zero waste. I think, um, it's impossible. I understand why it's used because it makes it kind of like is clickbaity. It's kind of like um, gets the idea across. gets the idea across, and the aim is zero waste. I know that most zero wasters they're not saying that they can be zero waste or that anyone can. They're just then saying that's the aim. Um, but my friend Immy, sustainably vegan, she did a whole video talking about this, and she has set up a whole new movement called the low impact movement, talking about how. Um, she relates to that term better, low impact, move, low impact rather than zero waste, and it's more accessible to more people because mm -hmm. I think the term zero waste <clears throat> cuts off a lot of people from making, well, at least I think anyway, I think it, it, it shuts off a whole group of people from being able to do it, whereas I think something like low impact or yep. eco-friendly or I don't know, there's like other terms that maybe are a bit more inviting because mm -hmm. zero waste can seem very intimidating. It's all or nothing, yeah. It's all or nothing, yeah. I guess it's similar with terms like veganism or minimalism. They can be off-putting to people yeah. as well. You yeah, know? people are like, well, if I, if I can't do this one thing, then why do I bother? Yeah. Like, um, yeah. Exactly. It, and no human can do, be zero well, waste the, because yeah. you're a human being and you're living but on the planet. Since we've moved here, I've noticed, definitely, since we compost our food and we have, we recycle everything oh, yeah. we can. We do the best we, we can. We take the bin out, maybe like, once a month, yeah, two or three times every other month. It's just, yeah, um, yeah way We less. personally yeah. don't produce 
anywhere near the amount of waste we used to. We no. really try our hardest with everything. We're constantly improving, constantly getting better. Mm. I'm really inspired by a lot of other zero wasters and a lot of low impactors and other people online. And I try and inspire other people as well, but nobody's perfect and I don't put pressure on myself. A lot of people sometimes criticize me for having lots of plastic packaging in my food. But my justification and my issue that I had with zero waste is that I suffered from an eating disorder for years. And I never want to put any restrictions on food ever again in my life. So one of the decisions that I made was that if I'm gonna have um, live eco-friendly, I'm not gonna restrict myself mm. if I wanna get something in plastic. I'm gonna buy that thing. I'm not gonna have any guilt like, surrounding it. I say we definitely, if we see something in plastic and we think we, we don't really it. need it, yeah. we, won't, we, we won't get it. Yeah. But if it's something like porridge, oats, yeah. it's so hard to get. Like sure, we could cycle 20 minutes to the shop. Or drive that has, into town to get the bulk yeah. porridge, but, but I'm not sure that that's... For so many people, that's just completely not... Also, I don't know, that, is that any more eco-friendly if you were to drive into town? Well, not drive. <laughs> like when they're but also, to test what I we have, we how, have like shops around the corner. How is the porridge delivered? To these yeah, bulk stores. I've always wondered that. Are they pouring it out of a plastic package into their glass containers? Yeah, I've always wondered that, yeah. <laughs> but the point what I was saying was that I don't want any restrictions on my food, and also my job is creating recipes. So I never ever put any guilt around that, and I do bloody well with everything else. I'm vegan, I'm a minimalist. The main thing that you can do, honestly, is to stop buying so much stuff and to eat less meat and dairy. And the plastic stuff, obviously, is important. I say no to straws, I take my own water bottle. Um, I try and avoid Cutlery. plastic packaging, but also I don't put too much pressure on myself because that would mean I would go crazy and it would affect my job and I'm ranting now, but um, yeah, I'm not convinced that anyone can be zero waste, but there are some people out there who do really amazingly. They're so inspiring. I follow a lot of them. So no hate to any zero wasters because they're doing a bloody incredible job. Hats off to them. Where did you decide to move? Spoilers. Can't say that yet. Can we, we can't talk about that yet. We're not sure, we can't. Or we don't yeah. even know what's going on. We don't know what's not, going on It's not yet. like we've decided we we're about to move, isn't no. it? No, yeah. Um, mm, let's see if there's any more. I wanna get a different variety. Oh, do you want children? Three, two, one, no. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. I'd like a dog. We want children, but not, not yet. Like, yeah. in our 30s, we're 26 I'd like now. a dog first. I suppose is the answer to that. We want a house, we want a dog, we want to get married, and then we'll have kids. A million dollars. Dollars? A pool. Where are you living? And a hot tub. What? We want none of those things. We just, well, we, we want to settle I first. I wouldn't mind those things. A pool? When would you use it in England? i just, as long as I had it. Once you have it, you have it. Mm. No one can take that away from you. How do you travel to places with less Vegan options. Um, hmm. Do your research. Like, if you're going to go somewhere that you know that there's a, you're re really remote and there's not going to be many vegan options or <clears throat> vegan restaurants, then learn about like the um, local cuisine, like local dishes, and find out if there's any vegan ones. So, for example, if you're going to somewhere remote in Italy, Italy's not a good example because it's so easy to be vegan yeah. in Italy. But you but, went to like uh, Budapest, didn't you? And that was. Yeah, a Budapest. Challenge. I went to Hungary and there wasn't. I was with non-vegans, so it was a bit tricky, but there's yeah. always something. Like, I think there's always something you can eat. And if you speak to the chef ahead of time, it's, if you, yeah. you know, there's always things to eat. There's always vegetables, there's always fries, chips. There's always, um, there's always well, something, when we bread. Were holiday, there's always supermarkets. Supermarkets, we can make our own food. yeah. Um, we got lucky when we went to Mallorca in that there was randomly a vegan restaurant, yeah. vegan vegetarian so restaurant good. right on our doorstep. Yeah. But there wasn't another one for 20 miles. No. But then I did go to like other restaurants and I was asking about their food. Like I asked the guy in the kebab shop, I said, do your falafels, like, do they have egg in them and stuff? And he went and checked packaging, like, find out what could be, mm -hmm. even if it's like one dish at one local restaurant or something. I'm like, I'm not, obviously don't want to have a sweeping statement here, but we've traveled a lot of places and we've never had a problem. Hmm. Like we've traveled to eight, like Southeast Asia, we've traveled all over Europe and I think it just requires... Like, unless you're going somewhere really, 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 really yeah. remote, I think you're going to be okay. I don't think... I think don't worry about people it. People understand it nowadays. People do understand it nowadays. And as long as you just do a little bit of research just so you know what you're looking for. And there's always shops, there's always fruit and veg, there's always grains like porridge mm -hmm. and rice and pasta mm. and things like that that make, you know, you can always make your own food. 
Um, but maybe you're traveling, maybe try and stay somewhere which you've got your own accommodation to make that easier. Um, if you weren't a blogger, YouTuber, what would you do? I would be a race car driver or an astronaut. <laughs> Okay. What'd you be? Um, I don't think that's what you'd be, honey. Well, I would I gave be a, a pretty promising career for you. I I would be self-employed. I'd probably be um, working with my mum because my mum has a, a holiday home exchange website, which I'm going to be talking about a bit more in the future because um, she's just got a new website recently, and I want to you know talk about it more because it's such a cool business. Um, I'd probably be working with her because I used to work with her before I started YouTube. Yeah. Well, that's what you're doing half and half. That's what I was doing half and half before. And it's such an incredible business. It's just that she was waiting on a website and it's, she's had lots of ups and downs with that. But she's getting a website now and um, it's like a business that I would be very passionate to work on. Or I would probably just be self-employed in some other capacity doing something creative um, because I always envisage that's what I would do because my mum was always self-employed and I was always very inspired by her. We're very similar personality types and I think it fits who I am to be self-employed. Hmm. All right. What would you be doing? I don't know what you'd be doing. I don't know. You'd be doing some kind of smart job. Would I? I had a pretty boring job or like for a while. teaching. I think you'd be really good as a teacher. Well, I was planning to be a teacher mm. for a little while. <clears throat> and I thought my degree classics could like lead into that, but yeah. I don't know. Just the idea of it. Uh, I don't know. I used to. I taught kids once for like a whole term when I was at school, but I don't know. Mm. I'm doing it. I'm not. I mean, I, I'm making YouTube videos here, but I was never that kind of outspoken. I could never really stand up in front of people and talk. I always found that quite scary. So I don't think I'll be suited to being a teacher. Also, I'm not very strict or stern, so I would have no... No, way. you wouldn't I, have much authority. Yeah. Um, we've done like nearly half an hour, so okay. we'll... You, are, I, you answer the next question. Right, one more? Or? Two more. Two more. Do you have any favourite vegan restaurants, cafes in London? Oh, yes I do. I love, and Maddie will back me up, because it's her favourite too, the diner. That's your favourite? Mm -mm. No. Basically, it's well, it's not really it's really good to turn vegan, but they have quite a lot of restaurants around London. I know they have one main one in the Strand, which I think mm -hmm. has a separate vegan menu. But mm -hmm. I think the other ones are adopting that as well. We went to one in Camden recently, mm -hmm. um, and they're great because they have you know, it's like a typical American style diner, and they have lots of meat, but they also have really great vegan food, like they had like seitan wings and mac and cheese and I think they didn't have pizza but they have loads of burgers and stuff and it was amazing mm -hmm. and it's great to go there we went there with some non-vegan friends and they can try we always go there with non-vegan friends yeah, it's yeah. so perfect um apart from oh, I'm struggling to think <laughs> I'm gonna say Mildred's is amazing uh, I've never been there go to Camden Market because it has tons of vegan and, yeah, options I feel like we, we were in Camden with all this great vegan food and we went to the diner <laughs> chain <laughs> But, oh, it's Camden, uh, Parezza, which is obviously Parezza, in Brighton too. which is in Brighton too. Amazing pizza. I think it was voted the best pizza in the UK or something. Yeah. Best pizza like in the, the year National or something. the National Pizza Awards yeah, recently. Which is yeah, which amazing. Um, but yeah, Camden Market, they have things like Crosstown donut, Donuts, which do amazing vegan donuts. Camera just died. Um, Hang on, let me get back. <sighs> yeah, Rudy's Dirty Vegan Diner or something like that. I went there last yeah. time. It was really good. You've been to more places than I have. Um, those are the ones that stand out oh, in my head. Though. I'd love to. I think more places are opening up in Hackney as well. I yeah. love, we've only been to the Temple, Temple of, of Satan. Satan once, but it yeah. was really good. And Earthling Edge just opened a place called Unity Diner, which is all yeah. vegan. Um, there's so many. Go, so get Happy Cow, and like, there's so many. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. We've been oh, to a lot of them. Uh, the Vegan Hippo I liked. Is that That's still not open? there anymore. Closed now? I think it's Has closed. It moved? Or has it gone? Oh, Cookies and Scream. They do amazing, like, that moved. cookie sandwiches. From Camden. And also, um, you like Eureka. Miss Cupcake. And oh, and Eureka, yeah, the the ice cream place. There's well, Lowe's. We know a lot of places. And Lola's Cupcake. Oh my gosh. I they like, have them everywhere. I like Lola's chains cupcakes. that are all over the place that you can get a good vegan. They, food. they often have them at the train station and they have yeah. a vegan cupcake usually. And the banana tree. That had great vegan banana food. Banana tree, it, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think we're going to. One, one more question. Um, do you experience digestion issues on a vegan diet? Well. I have, but I don't think it's got anything to do with a vegan diet. So I've had like, IBS for a while. I still kind of have it. Two questions there almost. 
I have experienced better digestive health mm. because I, uh, you will attest, I, I used to be very, very farty mm -hmm. and used to the, to the point where you would just like, you wouldn't want to sleep in the same bed as no, me. No, it was gross. It would um, be regular. You only, like when you fart now, it only occasionally smells. Well, that's the thing. I, there was a study, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent, but there was a, like a study, I just read the title. It said, if it, everyone in the US switched from beef to beans, it, the US would reach its like global emissions targets to lower its targets. And then everyone in the comments was saying, oh, but you'd create so much more emissions from your bum. Uh, like, How do people actually say that? <laughs> I was like, I had way worse digestion and like, like the internet is a, um, like is a terrible place. Problems with that. Uh, when I ate meat and like red meat and beef and stuff. Beans, I find it's like, it's good because it's like fiber and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. It, yeah, it goes down smooth. You just have to rinse them. Yeah. And also when you first go vegan, maybe you'll be a bit more gassy because your body's adjusting. Yeah. But like but. my digestion when I wasn't experiencing IBS was way better, same as Alex. But then I got IBS because of stress. Um, I went to see a doctor and a yeah. dietitian and um, I still have it, but it's, I've managed the symptoms through yoga, being more mindful, spending less time on social media, but I'm terrible at getting myself stressed out by, I'm just a um, worry. hyper personality and I'm also a warrior and I have anxiety and just, I let myself get into a state and I don't take care of myself sometimes and mm. I, I don't practice what I preach, but recently I've been practicing more of what I preach and taking more time for myself when I'm having a bit more balance and it's really helped. It's meant that um, when I get IBS, it's because I'm traveling or it's because I've had a particularly stressful day or something and I'm like progressively improving. Um, there was a period of time where lots of foods were irritating mm -hmm. my, my tummy and I was constipated all the time and um, I had terrible oh. stomach pains, all of it. I talked about it a little bit, but I have managed to overcome them, thankfully. And I think yoga has really, really contributed to that. And I will recommend Yoga with Adrian. She's incredible. So yeah, yoga, sleep, chilling out, <clears throat> not getting stressed out about things, kind of realizing that modern day life is very stressful and actually your mind gut connection is so strong. So you need to... Social media is uh, big. Yeah. Reduce your time on social media. Yeah, reduce yeah. your time in front of your phone, spend more time with people, talk to people. I, I've made more of an effort to verbally tell you when I'm feeling low and anxious and mm -hmm. talk it through and yeah, there's lots of things, but um, I don't think it's got anything to do with veganism. It's just, also I had an eating disorder for years, so I have a much more damaged digestive system. That's my own problem. Mm. And that's probably why. Also women are way more susceptible. 70% of people who have IBS are women because of hormones. Oh. So hmm. let's wrap this up because yeah. it's been a long video, but it's yeah. fine. Mukbangs are always long. Hope you enjoyed the If you don't questions. like it, just, I don't know. You like to watch videos on like 1.5 speed. Yeah, or just watch it in the background. <laughs> that's what I do. Watch I'll it while you do the washing up. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I like to do. But this was um, delicious. If we didn't answer your question, it's because it wasn't good enough. I think we answered a lot of the main ones because yeah. I only just posted this when we started the video. So obviously I'm going to delete it now because we'll probably get loads more questions through. Um, but I'm sure you could always save some <coughs> questions. Sorry. How rude. You save some questions for another time. Yeah, we'll do it again. Yeah. I like this, if this could become a thing. Me too. Because we do a lot of, like when we do a food video, yeah, if we just have we a, because it will help us eat. Give it a thumbs up. The huge amounts of food we make when we make yeah. the videos on your channel. Give it a big thumbs up and we will do this um, fortnightly or something when we do yeah. recipe videos and we'll try our food on camera like this. Look how cute these are. We've got these in Aldi. We're doing a giveaway on these three squashes. I can't bend my arms further than this because um, we did a pull workout. Alex went to the gym with me the other day for the first time ever. And Second time. Really? I did the trial with you oh, at your yeah. previous gym. Oh yeah. But this one we did um, a competition against each other hanging on the monkey bars. Yeah. I She's think been going to the gym for like a year and I beat her first time. You're a man. And I was giggling. And I'd also done more workouts mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we're both dying from that workout. I think because I was like with Alex, I was like pushing myself more, I guess the competition. I'm like yeah. competitive. I don't know. I, I just, I'm, I I'm hurt. trying to count in my head. It was like 40 seconds we were hanging. Really? Yeah. That's pretty good. And I can definitely feel 
Yeah. It, the, <laughs> like just doing that. <laughs> also, I've done yoga every day as well. And the day after we did that workout, I did a yoga with Adrian and it was abs and like arms and because it was like planks and stuff. And I was like, this is not the day I need to do this. <laughs> anyway, we need to wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed. Um, and we're gonna probably do, we never, we said we were gonna do an update video and we never did. We will do an update video. We're supposed video. to sort of be in this, but. No, but we'll do an update video when we know what we're doing. Like so I don't think there's any point in us doing an update unless we know what we're gonna be doing. Mm. Because we're potentially moving either yeah. out of this flat in Brighton or um, maybe Cornwall or we don't know and maybe there's other things, we don't know what, what's going on. So there's no point in talking and giving a life update until we know those things. So we'll do that when we know, it should be shortly. It should be like next week or the week after. We know what's going on. Um, and then we'll probably hopefully have some fun moving vlogs and oh, yeah. house hunting and stuff. Oh, yeah. So, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Just uh, oh, I'm hot, it's very hot. Look, we ate half of it. That was a pretty epic amount of food we just ate. Go us. Look how long my arm looks. <laughs> <laughs>